So just before we started recording this segment, we started talking more Christmas stuff and everything, and you showed me a tweet that we're going to get to in a few minutes. But this is going to be probably one out of many segments based on this topic. Sure. Science versus religion. Correct. Now, you had a discussion with your father on Christmas Eve that was very interesting, and he's he's starting to... It's yeah. weird, you know, that like if I talk to my old school, like Italian father about it, he'd backhand me. Like right, you right. You actually have a conversation yeah. with my your dad, father. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my dad, my dad uh, is a, a civil engineer, right? And so he's extremely smart in the math science area, but he's very in the box. You know what I mean? He's very mainstream thinker. And so I've brought a lot of these flat earth questions and science questions up to him recently. And, uh, I've been encouraged to go further with him because he hasn't been as close minded as I thought he would be. He's, he's very open to it and thinks about them. So Christmas Eve, we're talking and I'm like, you know, talking to him more about the eclipse stuff and the, the, the holes in the model, if you will, and not necessarily about flat earth. So he then inevitably, like so many out there gets to the question of, you know, once his wheels start turning and once he starts examining this stuff and sees the holes himself, he says, but why, why would they hide it? You know why? And I told him, look, I'm not saying this is a fact, but the prevailing theory amongst the flat earth community is that this goes back 500 years to the science versus religion war. And when Copernicus put in the heliocentric model and then they got gravity and then we got uh, evolution, then we got the big bang and the age of the universe or age of the earth being 4.6. And, and then the Dan Brown movies. The Dan Brown movies coming out. <laughs> right here. All of this stuff in science, every stride in science has essentially put one more nail in the coffin of the Old Testament, right? Creation just keeps getting further and further away from reality if science is to be taken as reality. And he said, well, I think it's a stretch because, you know, they may do that, but I'm still going to believe what I'm going to believe. And I'm like, you may. You're an adult. You're at a certain age. But those high school students, those college students who are learning these scientific theories as laws what about them? And the very next day was when Neil deGrasse tweeted this. Well, I want to, I want to, before you get to that, your, your father's a civil engineer. He's, you know, he bases all his work in science. Sure. So you would call him a scientist to some degree within yes. his field. Now he had a conversation with you. He asked questions. He listened to you. He listened to your questions, stuff like Neil deGrasse Tyson and other scientists mostly tv scientists the bill nye science guy those guys it seems like they are marginalizing anybody to ask questions which is really weird because all you're really using is is what would you akin to the scientific method correct you're trying to eliminate stuff you're trying to figure out and if you still have the same questions you go back to the beginning right you test and retest all right and that's what you've done but, sure but why wouldn't they just sit down and talk to somebody and reason with them and go through the scientific method to prove their, I'm just saying, yeah. they, they, they have marginalized people, shouting them down, left them down, dropping the mic, doing all that stuff. And then this tweet is sort of, I mean, it's akin to, I well, mean, it's not akin to, it's a, it's a direct middle finger to Christianity and specifically Jesus, in my opinion. Yes, yes. Uh, on, this was on Christmas Eve where I'm talking to my father about the, the war that exists between science and religion. And lo and behold, the very next day, Neil deGrasse Tyson tweeted this out. And I'm like, Dad, if this isn't proof for you that the war still exists, take a look at this, this tweet. And, it, you know, if the guy just wanted to wish a happy birthday to someone, he could have just said happy birthday so-and-so. But the tweet reads this. Christmas Day. On this day long ago, a child was born who by the age of 30 would transform the world. And who are we thinking? We're thinking Jesus, right? Happy birthday, Isaac Newton, December 25th, 1642. What a slap in the face to those who do believe out there. Yeah. I, I mean, if, there was no point in this, I guess is my point, is that the only point in the nature of this tweet was to insult was insult, to ridicule marginalize and just generally be a dick yeah to be a dick thank you very much exactly 